These are the words chanted for a fallen warrior of the Savannah. Our English language cannot begin to describe the insurmountable respect and honor that African people have for the leopards and the lions of their land. celebration you are witnessing is not for the death of the leopard, but honoring and celebrating the life it lived. First thing that we're looking at here is we're down in this lake ecosystem. There is a lot of high density of game down here, a lot of puku, waterbuck, impala, bushbuck. So for a very big leopard, this is where he's going to be. I remember explaining to you that the lake ecosystem is large, but because of how high the water has come up, that leopard is going to be forced to move further upstream. We've got this beautiful riverine thicket that we're in right now right up against the river and so he'll be using this as a channel to move up and down hunting bush buck bush pig puku whatever it is really really important is obviously the wind the wind is is pumping to our right which is perfect we're going to position the bait on this yellow fever acacia right here There's this limb right above you that's completely broadside and parallel to the and ground parallel yeah. to the ground and that's exactly what we want because when you're taking a shot on a leopard we want that leopard to be standing on that limb completely broadside when the arrow goes off. So we've got some natural cover over there, that beautiful thicket over there, which we could even come in with a foot approach. So if it's a very switched on leopard, then yeah. a foot approach is always the most, well, you'll have the highest success rate with a foot approach. Yeah. But you can see we've got that natural cover ready. So I'm gonna position the blind at about 25 yards, maybe Perfect. inside that thicket. And then we can come in through the thicket like there. So access is, is that, key. Exactly. Leopards have the largest geographical ranges of any of the big cat species. Their home ranges can extend out as far as 50 miles. Leopards are solitary animals that rarely ever interact with each other other than to mate and raise cubs. So naturally the males are very territorial and rarely tolerate other males in their established home ranges. It begs the question, why would you ever want to hunt a leopard? Most people believe it's for their rosette pattern skins and their valuable teeth and claws. Though these are incredible attributes of a leopard, there are significantly deeper reasons why we hunt them. However, their beautiful pattern coats are extremely sought after in the illegal fur trade market.
This makes leopards across all of Africa a very lucrative target for poachers. On top of that, leopards naturally are opportunistic hunters. Like all predators, they prefer easy prey. So local livestock and even the locals themselves can be easy targets for the leopards of Africa. This often leaves locals poisoning the baits in hopes to kill the leopards. So from their expensive skins to their livestock killing habits, this creates catastrophic problems for the leopards. So who is out there protecting them? Who is stopping all of this from happening? Believe it or not, us hunters are the biggest contributors to the anti-poaching efforts and preventing local eradication. That can't be correct. We are hunting to kill a leopard. How could we possibly be the ones responsible for protecting them? Well, let me explain. American big game hunter who is drawing international outrage this morning. The most dark point about all of it is that all of the money that would come from people hunting there would sustain these local areas, sustain these lodges, so it would make it viable to keep these animals alive and stop poachers. I'm making the argument that species are thriving in part because of big game hunters. I'm talking about big game hunting here and I'm saying there's no justification for it that I can figure out. Can you explain to me what the justification is? And the only thing that protects the animals from poaching is hunting. It sounds so, so counterintuitive weird, yeah. and so far, but you have to look at it honestly. Remember, without this value, these animals would not be protected from the poachers and the locals. And unfortunately, without protection, eradication is inevitable. When a well-respected professional hunter hunts a leopard, they are looking for a specific type of leopard that is extraordinarily hard to find. As for the specific leopard I'm hunting called Hannibal, he is a legend here in Tanzania. Over the years, RPH Lorne has had many clients try and hunt this beast, but all have fallen short. When I heard of this leopard, the first thing I asked was how did he get his name? The answer was shocking to say the least, he got his name because he had been known to kill and eat other leopards. But when I heard this ancient beast's history, I was all in. I wanted to hunt him. I wanted to go face to face on the ground with a bow and hunt Hannibal, the killer of his own kind. I think it's the young male. No, it's not young. It's an older male. I, mean, I, think, I think the other one killed him. What are those? Are those bite marks? What we found is the more big dominant leopard killed this leopard. And so this is a fight of territory, stuff like this. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there. In this case, a cat-eat-cat world. Freaking unbelievable. It's a big old leopard. That means there's an even bigger dominant beast in the area. Jeez. We searched for days, driving for hours and hours and hundreds of miles looking for tracks. We focused on the areas Hannibal has been seen in years past, looking for giant leopard tracks. Finally, after hundreds of miles of searching, we found a track of a cat that was so large, we were certain it belonged to Hannibal. Now it was time to set the bait, but before we could do that, we needed to hunt the bait. It didn't take long before we spotted a group of buffalo that were in a good position to stalk. So I took my time and snuck in under 50 yards. I calmed my breath, drew my bow, and settled my pin on the quarter and way bull, and took my shot. My arrow flew true, hitting the bull perfectly, and he didn't go far. We found him and got to work right away on harvesting his meat. We brought most of his meat back to camp, but we kept some for baiting Hannibal. All the prep work has been done. We woke up at 2.30 in the morning and drove into the bush. 
it's important we get to the blind hours before the sun comes up. As the sun began to crack the horizon, we heard the distinct sound of claws climbing a tree. We looked up and we couldn't believe our eyes. We were staring at Hannibal. We're sitting anxiously in the dark, listening to the hyenas fight over the scraps from the bait hanging above. There's no room for error. My shot had to be perfect. If I made a poor shot, we surely would be attacked and likely killed tracking it. We all have families to get back to. The pressure I'm feeling is nothing like I've ever felt. I have to make the best shot of my life. Everyone is counting on me. in the shoulder uh, dude and, and i saw the out. exit well yes. i was set at 29 and I, I knew he came into like 25 and i was like i aimed low and i'm like i'm not letting down and adjusting we did it, it man we did it buddy oh, we, we did it we pulled the car just get it to come we just shot an absolute bubble, beast bubble. hannibal is down we got him guys Down, we got him. Woo! We got him, baby. He's down. down. Guys, come. We got him. Beautiful. Wow. Oh my God. We did it. You guys can come. We did it, guys. Look at his basket on his neck. We did it. Unbelievable. Smoke City, baby. We got him. Look at this, Josh. This is the most important. This is the most 
impressive part of this leopard is this wow. dew lamp, you know? Just for the age. Wow. Well done. Thank good. you so much. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is just amazing. Man, I, this is the leopard of a lifetime for sure. Oh my gosh. I just, I'm just soaking up the moment. I don't, I don't even want to say anything just because I'm just in awe right enjoy now. Enjoy it. You got it done. could see how much this means to everybody involved honestly it's truly a celebration not of death but of life I mean it is just unbelievable truly I mean everybody involved with all this have had family members with human you know to animal conflict with lions and leopards and everything and so for us to do our part with this and you know the money that we spend for doing this you know feeds everyone you see here in their home families and everyone everyone involved in their families. It's truly amazing. And I love to be a part of it. 